Hello and welcome to the 11th week of season 22, Season of the Witch, starting on October 31st, 2023. So for week 11, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a medium curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Davilian Mists, and has the Oracle Engine mission for the next week. The Blind World features Hive enemies and the Plague, Kregar. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Chimera Garrison, which can be located over in the Chamber of Starlight Lost Sector on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the Moon, the weekly story mission is a Mysterious Disturbance. The Trove Guardian and the Wandering Nightmare, the Nightmare of Hawkis, are both located in the Anchor of Light. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Scolus, Pride, Fanatic, Insanity, and Omnigal, Anguish. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Phylax the Warrior will be the Empire Hunt, Asterian's Abyss will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Agility. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Dares of Eternity Legendary rounds are Taken, Kabul, and for the final round, Zydron. The Loot Rotation will be on Week 4's Rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armor Set, and the Pathfinder armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Precision Frame Shotgun Fractithis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle Cryosura Milo, the Stasis Precision Frame Hand Cannon Vogue Picula, the Arc Precision Frame Bow Wolf Tone Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Iotona Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Frame Scout Rifle Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword Steel Syllabus C14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm Spoiler Alert. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen Weekly Story Mission is the last chance, where the modifier is Martyr, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you'll have Altar of Reflections Catalyst, and Altar of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a feature Throne World weapon, Veritas Armour and a Weapon Pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful Expansion, the weekly mission is First Contact, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions, Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Void Threat, Scorched Earth, Overcharged Weapons, Arc and Strand Surges, Overcharged Shotguns and Galvanised on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Ordnance, Contest Mode Enabled with Overload and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Shields, Air Superiority Modifier with Solar and Strand Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Amsha Park. In addition, the Weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons The Crota's End Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Iyut the Death Singer, called Equal Vessel. All six players must rotate the Chalice of Light buff in the same order throughout the entire fight. Each player cannot hold the Chalice again before all five other players have. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept weapon. The Adept weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The Root of Nightmares raid challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Nezarek, called All Hands. Each player in your fire team must trigger one node on each side before the damage phase begins. The Kingsfall Raid Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Daughters of Oryx, called Under Construction. Players cannot stand on the same plate twice in a single phase. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Deep Zone Crit Challenge this week is the third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cycloxes in the first two rooms. And the last wish challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Vault, called Keep Out. Guardians must ensure that no Might of Riven Knights make it to the center chamber during the Vault fight. Your pinnacle raid will be the Vault of Glass over in the Legends tab, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Confluxes, called Wait For It, where every yellow bar wyvern must be killed as they sacrifice themselves to the confluxes. The second encounter, oracles, called the only oracle for you. Players cannot destroy the same oracle more than once. The third encounter, templar, called out of its way, where you must keep the templar from teleporting. The fourth encounter, gatekeeper, called strangers in time. Players must defeat the Praetorians and wyverns at the same time. And the fifth encounter, atheon, called 
and Zembla's refrain. Each player teleported can only destroy one oracle in each spawn set. Also, with the Vault of Glass being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic fusion rifle Vex Mythoclast. The Pinnacle Dungeon will be the Prophecy over in the Legends tab, and our exotic mission rotator will be Vox Obscura, with the Dead Messenger exotic grenade launcher being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Solar Waveframe Grenade Launcher Explosive Personality, the Stasis Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Recurrent Impact, the Void Precision Frame Bow under your skin, the Arc Rapid Fire Frame Auto Rifle Sweet Sorrow, the Stasis Adaptive Frame Sniper Thoughtless, and the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle Peace of Mind with the Tusk Allegiance Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. We have now had all 75 challenges over the first 10 weeks of the season. So, as a reminder, if you complete 72 out of the 75, you can get a large pile of Bright Dust to spend at the Eververse store in-game. Here's a few that you might have missed that you might want to get completed in the next few weeks. Filamentary Magic. Defeat 100 targets with Strand, Arc or Solar Supers. Earn bonus progress for defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Trial by Firing Squad. Win multiple rounds in Trials of Osiris. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus Plus. Bright Dust and a Trials Weapon. Fleeting Glory. Complete Crucible matches in the competitive playlist. And bonus progress for wins. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Bounty Conjurer. Complete three daily bounties during the Season of the Witch. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Darkest Nightfall. Complete any Nightfall on Hero difficulty or higher. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Bright Dust and a Nightfall Weapon. Mod Collector. Unlock 12 Artifact Mods. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. And Lost in Legend. Complete a Lost Sector on Legend or Master. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Hello. Hello. As a reminder, your daily Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a Legend slash Master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team but you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, October 31st will be K1 Communion on the moon for exotic boots, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Void Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overjoyed Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Wednesday, November 1st will be K1 Crew Quarters on the moon for exotic gauntlets, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar Shields, Hot Knife Modifier, Overcharged Glaze with Barrier and Overload Champions. Thursday, November 2nd will be the Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Chests, Solar Threat, Arkham Strand Surges, Void Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Trace Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Friday, November 3rd will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Helmets, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharged Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. Saturday, November 4th will be Battle Drowned Wishes on the Dreaming City for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Stalker Shield Modifier, Overcharged Snipers with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. Sunday November 5th will be Val's Labyrinth on the Cosmodrome for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. And finally back round to Monday November 6th will be Exodus Garden 2A on the Cosmodrome for Exotic Chests, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Our 11th featured Nightfall of the season will see us face off against Sepkis Prime in the Devil's Lair Nightfall over on the Cosmodrome, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to be in common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 4 barrier and 8 overload champions, with 5 solar, 8 void and 17 arc shields. Masters and GMs will have 4 barrier and 15 overload, with 5 solar, 8 void and 8 arc shields. Your nightfall modifiers are hero difficulty maximum effective level 1765, matchmaking is available, enemies have extra shields, Champions Foe, you will face Barrier and Overload Champions. You can either use Intrinsic Exotics, use a subclass debuff or unlock anti-champion mods from the Seasonal Artifact. Arc Threat, 25% increase to incoming arc damage. Arachno, 
When defeated, Fallen Vandals spawn web mines at their feet. Overcharged weapons. Weapons overcharged from the seasonal artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Arc surge, 25% bonus to outgoing arc damage. Strand surge, 25% bonus to outgoing strand damage. Overcharged linear fusion rifles, 25% bonus damage with linear fusion rifles. Galvanized, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. No matchmaking. Equipment locked. You will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master difficulty. Maximum effective level 1820 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Champions mob. This difficulty adds more champion enemies. Togetherness. Base health regen is reduced. If near another player, health regen is increased. Grand Master difficulty. Maximum effective level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Join in progress disabled. Extinguish. If your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives. Gain additional revives by defeating champions, up to a maximum of 20. Contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. And chafe. Radar is disabled. To combat champions this season, you will have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods, which are anti-barrier auto rifle, anti-barrier bow, overload hand cannon, and overload machine guns. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier, the kinetic bow wish ender, the kinetic linear fusion rifle arbalist, the kinetic pulse rifle revision zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's vow, the solar heavy sword the lament, and the titan gauntlet second chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for overload, the void energy bow the monarch, the Arc Energy Linear Trace Rifle Divinity, the Arc Heavy Machine Gun Thunderlord, and the Warlock Exotic Boots the Seacant Filaments, which when you drop an Empowering Rift, any weapon that is fired from inside the well can cause an Overload Champion to be stunned. The Nightfall Featured Weapon to obtain this week will be the Arc Heavy Machine Gun the Swarm. The Swarm is a high impact frame heavy machine gun with a base impact of 70, a range of 69 and stability of 33. It can roll with Vorpal, tap the trigger and Zen Moment. With Dynamic Sway Reduction, Killing Wind and One for All. It has the origin trait of Stunning Recovery, where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and improve your recovery for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with the weapon grant a small amount of health. Lord Shaxwing's Mayhem to the Crucible for the 11th week of the season. Mayhem is where two teams of six players go head to head in a clash type mode. Abilities and supers charge at an extremely faster rate than usual. Respawns are instant, and power ammo spawns are also much faster than usual. With a time limit of 10 minutes, the first team to get 125 eliminations is the winner. And Zone Control will also be available in the Relentless Crucible playlist. Zone Control is a 6v6 game mode which emphasizes team-based gameplay in capturing zones and not kills. Zone Control forces players to collaborate more actively in capturing and defending zones. Capturing zones dramatically takes longer if only one player tries to do it themselves, with it taking 22.5 seconds to capture the point whereas two can capture within 10 seconds. Three or more players will capture the zone in 7.5 seconds. Beyond that, capturing a zone will net the team one point per capture, and holding onto the point will reward two points every 15 seconds per zone, making it essential to lock down areas rather than float between them carelessly. The first team to 125 points wins. And available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be the returning game mode Relic. Relic is a 6v6 PvP party mode where all players wreak havoc and destruction on their foes with a Relic weapon. Relics include the Aegis Shield from Vault of Glass, the Synaptic Spear from Season of the Risen, and the Scythe from Season of the Haunted. Each player charges their personal Relic energy by defeating opponents with their normal loadout. Upon reaching full charge, players can acquire the Relic from the Relic Depot. Defeating Relic holders and using Relics to defeat opponents earns points for the team. Delightful! And Saint 14 will be back at the weekend with Trials of Cyrus Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the Lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader, Bloodline Feud. Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, 
Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked to a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials, and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of seven games won and no losses. Five round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in trials, you do have a chance to pick up two pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. This week we'll see the return of bonus XP in the Gambit playlist. So if you want to fast track in getting that new ritual weapon, the Maledictation Hand Cannon, and Gambit Ornament, Mold Envy, then Gambit on my friends. This will also be the last week of the Festival of the Lost 2023, so don't forget to spin those candies and grab those rewards. Also, don't forget with us moving into the final few weeks of the season, this is your reminder to start collecting all of your Season of the Witch Pass items, any items left over from Season of the Deep Season Pass from Bungie.net, plus your reward track items and engrams from Banshee44, The Gunsmith, Shax, Crucible, Zavala, Vanguard, Drifter, Gambit, and Saint 14 Trials. Grab these before the end of the season as they will reset and you will lose all items when the new season starts. Don't forget you can also start hoarding those bounties to get a leg up on XP and artifact progression for next season. And that's it for week 11 of Season of the Witch. I art, Guardians. Guardian down.